Hello and welcome back to a new lecture on syntax. In our previous lecture, we said that XBAR rules overgenerate, meaning that they produce a lot of sentences, but not all of these sentences are grammatical. We said that we needed a secondary filtration system that would take only those that are well formed. We discussed two restrictions that we can put on XBAR. The first is subcategorizational restrictions, and the second is selectional or semantic restrictions. We've already discussed subcategorizational restrictions in the previous lecture. If you recall, these are the restrictions that tell us how many arguments each verb could have, whether it could have one argument before, or one argument before and one after, or two after. In this lecture, we focus on the second part, which is the selectional restrictions, those of semantic nature. Now, selectional restrictions work to limit the semantic properties of arguments. So it would tell us, for example, like the sentence, John showed Mary the moon is fine, but the rock showed Mary the moon doesn't sound right. It makes no sense. Now, what is the difference between John and the rock? Why is it that John works, but the rock doesn't? Well, to show, you need to be able or have the capacity to be able to make a conscious de decision and be able to act upon that decision. John is a person who can do that, but the rock is an object which cannot show. So therefore we have a list of what we call thematic relations. These thematic relations describe the semantic relations between an argument and a predicate. So let's look at these thematic relations. The first one we're going to talk about is the agent thematic relation. Now the agent is known as the initiator of the action and also that the agent is capable of volition. Volition means that the agent can act with conscious and free will. Okay, so the agent can make the choice to do something. An example of an agent role would be John in John hit Bob. John is the initiator of the action hit, and John also can initiate this action with volition. Therefore, John receives the agent thematic relation. Next up, we'll talk about the theme. Now, the theme is the entity which is moved by the action or whose location is described. For example, John kicked the ball. Now, if you kick the ball, then the ball will move. And therefore, the ball undergoes the effect of the action which is being moved. And so it is a theme. Next up, we'll talk about the patient thematic relation. Now, the patient is the entity which undergoes the effect of the action. And it's often accompanied by a change in states okay so for example john cut the tree now the tree is undergoing the effect of the action of cutting and its state has been changed so let's say it was standing up and now it is cut down next up we're going to talk about the experiencer which is the entity which is aware of the action but which is not in control of the action so the experiencer is aware but is not in control you might want to compare this with the agent. Here's a good example to show you the difference between agent and experiencer. We could say John looked at the moon, but also say John saw the moon. Now in this one, John is an agent, and in this one, John is an experiencer. Why this difference? Well, this also comes to show you how the verb may have its own selectional restrictions, semantic selectional restrictions. Now, if someone looks, the action of looking requires someone who can make the decision to look. Making a decision means that you are in control. You are able to act with volition. And therefore, we label John with the agent thematic relation. Now, sometimes you can see something that you did not want to see. So you are not in control of the action. You are just experiencing the moon. Therefore, John here is an experiencer. Next up, we have the beneficiary, which is the 
entity for whose benefit the action was performed. So for example, John bought Mary a car or John bought a car for Mary. Who is benefiting from this action? The action of buying. Mary is benefiting from this. So Mary here is the beneficiary. Same thing here. Mary is the beneficiary. Oftentimes you can know that a certain DP is a beneficiary by trying to play a bit around with the words and see if you can get this for here. This for indicates that there's a certain action that has been done for the benefit of this DP, in this case Mary. That way we know that Mary is a beneficiary. Next up we have the instrument, which is the means by which the action is performed. For example, John cut the tree with a saw. A saw here is the instrument used to cut the tree. So a saw is an instrument. Next up we have the location thematic relation, which is the place in which something takes place or is situated. For example, John put the book on the shelf. On the shelf is the place where something is situated. And therefore, it is a location. Next up is the goal. Now, the goal is the entity towards which something moves, either literally or metaphorically. For example, John went to school. To school is the entity or place towards which something moves. In this case, John is moving towards the school. So the school is the goal. Last but not least, something related to the goal is the source. The source is the entity from which something moves, either literally or metaphorically. So we could change this sentence up a bit to get a source like so. John came from school. So the source was from school. This is where John started moving. Now there are other thematic relations, but for now we'll make do with only these. Check out our lectures on semantics for more information about thematic relations. See you in the next lecture.